welcome to MD and in this tutorial I want to show you how to upload artifacts to JFrog Artifactory using JFrog CLI tool. Let's start. So here I have an empty repository. There is no items found. It's empty right now. How to start it up on your local machine in just uh, two minutes? I will show you at the end of the movie. But now I want to focus how to upload artifacts here using GFrog CLI, which is a Golang based client that connects to the GFrog Artifactory and upload artifacts from the local file system. I have a catalog here. There is example, oh, there are two catalogs. So I want to upload it exactly how it is visible over here. In order to do that, I need to prepare first specification file that will let me define what kind of files I want to upload. In order to do that, I will create the file upload.spec. This is a JSON file. So first, there is a pattern that say choose all the files and there is a target. And there is a tricky part here. Notice that there is a space and this is intentional. And I will explain you later on why it's so. There is a flat, which is false. So because I want to keep a structure and there is exclusions. So the patterns, the files that I, I don't want to include when I'm uploading. This is important to match these exclusions with the repository settings. Because if you will have wider choice of the files on the client side, then you will create unnecessary connections between your client and the repository because repository will reject the files, of course, according to their exclusion settings, but it will create unnecessary connections. Let's save that file. Now the file is there and there are two catalogs. Here is a Docker command. Notice that I'm mounting this, this catalog as a sources on a, on an image on a container uh, catalog. And here you are mounting the specification file to this place. And there is a command. First, it goes to the sources and that's on a purpose as well, because otherwise it will upload this sources as a root. And you don't want to have these sources to be on a repository. You want to see from the com and net. Here you have a, okay, I have the settings because there is no certificate set up on the artifactory and the threads. Threads can be less than 50 because it's a small number of, of files to upload. But if, in case you have a large repository to upload, it's necessary because it's a Golang, this JFrog CLI is written in Golang, which means it has a Go routines and it supports parallels execution. This is the address of the artifactory and uh, I need to specify the repository name. Testing first is a repository name. Password is what I set up there and user is also loader. Specification is as it is mounted. Let's start it. So there is a success of 485 and a failure of 58. The reason is that the repository testing first rejected the artifact because it's starting with dot. So the repository settings actually is more, more restricted because it's rejecting the files that are starting with the dot in its name. Whereas here in the in the mask, if you check the spec, it rejecting the files that has a dot and underscore but not rejecting the files that has a dot. So this is a good example to show you how you created 58 unnecessary connections. So in the next step, edit that upload spec and here you can add the pattern. Okay, so now everything that's starting from dot, okay, here I need to add the comma. So everything that started from dot will also be, also will be excluded. So if you run again the same command, it's a nine failures, so slightly less. Okay, there is a pattern that the first is a catalog and second is a file, which is the first catalog and the second file. This is the, the pattern, YYP. And here I need to remove this dash. Save it and run it again. Okay, now there is a success of 533 and zero failures, means there was no unnecessary connection created between the client JFrog CLI and the JFrog repository. And when you see this 
repository right now. You can refresh that page. Okay, this is uh, my failure, my fault, upload spec. Let's exclude that as well from the upload specification because this is of course not necessary. YYP, let's specify that, upload.spec, right. So now it will provide less count for the success because less file were tried to be uploaded. This file, of course, I need to manually delete. Delete this file. Yes, so let's try to run it again. So now it will not upload this file again because it is excluded. So you can see you have this nice uh, view. What will happen if you will remove the space from the target? Let's remove the space and see what will happen. This is what I discussed at the beginning. Now you have an issue that spec must include target. So what people will do if they will see that error, they will try to specify some catalog here for example, HH, but if you do this, it will create a one more catalog on the top. It's create your additional, additional catalog on top, which you don't want. So therefore, okay, you can refresh over here. Therefore, it's important to add the space over here. So keep the slash, but keep also the space before the slash. To start Artifactory, first you need to create configuration file. You create the file called system.yam file and inside you placed two configuration parameters. First one is shared node ID. You can type gfrog for example, gfrog. And second one is shared node IP. Shared node IP. Here you need to specify your IP address of the node. So I'm placing some IP over here. And that's it. Now you create the volume. You can create the volume with default settings. In this case, I'm using non-default parameters, for example, the size, the type, and the name. Now volume is created, so I can use it in Docker container. Here you can create the container that using open source version of Artifactory. Notice that here we are referring to the same volume that was created in a step before. Port forwarding, so you can access the instance from the host. And here there is a gfrog home that pointing to the volume. This is bind mode. The configuration file you created in a previous step is mounted under the gfrog home. So it can be used by server. Enter. The gfrog is starting up. Once it started, you perform the user as admin. This is default user and password is password. Now it started. They will ask you to change the password so you can specify stronger password. Place some stronger password here and base your, okay, this I can skip, skip, create repository, skip and finish. Now first create the project, create the new project. Project name, let's say it's a testing, testing, project K testing. Okay, great. In the repositories, go here to the project settings, repositories, add repositories, local repository, type maven, repository key first, create local repository. have a new user here let's say loader email address only in com okay some password and save it so there is a new user in the project overview users select the loader user assign the role developer you can click on done you have a one repository assigned to this project and you have um, one developer. So you can use that developer to populate the repository that is assigned to this project. Remember to visit my blog where you can find the latest articles. The version of this tutorial will be available as an article on the web page. So you can get ready to use code snippets and read it in the text form. Thank you for watching. I hope you like it and you will start to use it in your project. Have a nice coding. Bye.